Hey everyone! Today, I felt like doing another plant-themed DIY. I was online shopping a couple weeks ago and I found these planters that were pretty cute looking. They're just a little round pot and they have a plant stand. But then, inside of them I guess, they had like a little tray to catch the excess water that drips out. But you couldn't see it because of the way that the pot was made. So like normally if you have like a terracotta pot, you have like the pot and then you have the tray underneath so that it will catch any of the like excess water. If it's the kind of look you're going for, it's not bad. I don't really mind the look of terracotta pots with the little trays in them, but sometimes you just want something really like nice and sleek looking on your desk. So yeah, I thought the idea of those pots were really cute and I did the thing where like I put it in my cart but then I saved it for later because I didn't want to buy it at that point. I didn't really need it. I just wanted to have it there so I could remember later whenever I did feel like impulse buying it. Unfortunately, I waited too long and now they're unavailable. So I thought that I would take matters into my own hands and try to make one. Unfortunately, I don't have access to like a pottery studio at the moment or else I would have made it like that. So I thought that I would try making it out of polymer clay. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys how I did that. So let's get started. You'll need some polymer clay. For the one I'm doing here, I used about five of these blocks of clay. A rolling pin for polymer clay. I'm just using a PVC pipe. If you use PVC pipe, I suggest trying to clean off the text that's on it. The ink kind of transferred onto my polymer clay as I used it. Popsicle sticks, tape, cardboard, corrugated and uncorrugated. The not corrugated stuff is like a cereal box, or for me I'm using a beer case. <laughs> a ruler, exacto blade, and scissors. Using something that's round and about the size that you'd want for the pot, trace four circles onto the corrugated cardboard. Use another round thing that's about a fourth inch smaller than the previous thing and trace that onto the cardboard twice. For me, the outer edge of my tape was the perfect size for the first four circles, and the inside of the tape was perfect for the last two circles. Take the non-corrugated cardboard and cut a strip to be a little bit bigger than the final size of the pot that you want to make, and then tape that around one of the big circles, like so. My thin cardboard wasn't quite long enough to go around the circle, so I had to add a couple extra bits to cover the gap. It kind of sucks because it makes that area a bit misshapen later, but it's not too, too bad. Stick one of the other big circles into the other side of the cylinder and tape it in place. Cut another strip of cardboard that's an inch tall and tape around one of the big circles just like before. Then tape in the last big circle on the other side. Finally, take another inch tall strip of cardboard and tape it to the smaller circle piece, same as the other two. Then tape the final circle on the other side. Now, you're probably wondering what the heck these random cylinders are for. These will be what you form the pot around, and will help the clay keep its shape while it's baking in the oven. Yes, these are going to go in the oven, and yes, it's perfectly fine to do so. As long as you don't go over 275 degrees Fahrenheit, it should work just fine. Anyway, prep your clay. Polymer clay tends to be easier to work with once it's a bit warmed up, so knead it in your hands a bit first. I needed to mix my clay together. I wanted to make a nice pale blue, so I mixed these white and blue clays together. I ended up adding two more blocks of white clay later because this project ended up taking way more clay than I initially estimated. My final pot size was about four by three and a half inches, and I ended up using almost five blocks of clay. So hopefully that'll help you guys kind of figure out how much you'll need for how big of a pot you're making. Take a chunk of the clay and roll it out to be 1 4 inch thick. Two popsicle sticks laid on top of each other is about 1 4 of an inch, so I just taped two pieces together and put a bundle on either side of the clay that I was rolling out, using those as spacers. Using spacers when rolling out clay is a really nice way to make sure you roll everything out equal. Ideally, you'd have something longer than popsicle sticks though, if you had two square dowels on either side that were 1 4 inch, then that would be perfect. But I was just using what I had. Anyway, place the tall cylinder on the clay and cut out the circle. Pull the circle up and place it on top of the cylinder. Cut a small circle out of the middle 
this is going to be the drainage hole. Set that aside and roll a long piece of clay, again, 1 4 inch thick. You need this to be able to wrap completely around the cylinder with a little bit of overlap. Trim the clay down to be the height that you want for your pot. I trimmed mine down to 3 and a half inches. A half inch from the bottom, use a popsicle stick to lightly mark all the way across. Take the shorter cylinder and place it on top of the circle of clay on the bigger cylinder, sandwiching the clay like so. Place the cylinders down on the strip of clay, lining up the sandwiched clay with the top of the popsicle stick mark, and then roll along, bringing the clay strip around and overlapping itself. Cut the overlapped clay and remove the excess. Smooth this seam together. Since my cylinders were kind of wonky, remember because I had to use the extra cardboard to fill the gaps, I decided to add some texture onto my pot. I figured that this would help hide any sins. It would also allow me to get a better adhesion between this outer clay and the clay that was sandwiched in the middle. I just went around the pot making small vertical lines with a popsicle stick, like so, until it was completely covered. And I actually really dig how this turned out. Anyway, onto the last piece, roll out some more clay, 1 4 inch thick, and then cut it down to be 1 4 inch. Wrap that around the edge of the small cylinder. Roll out some more clay, as always, 1 4 inch thick, and place the cylinder on top, cutting around the clay. Peel the circle up and place it back onto the cylinder and smooth the clay together. Don't forget to sign your work. Now, go bake these pieces. Bake at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for probably 15 minutes, but you'll want to refer to your clay's cook times. It may be longer or shorter. For mine, it's 15 minutes per 1 4 inch of thickness, so yeah. Again, baking it with the cardboard is totally fine. The ignition temperature of paper is a lot higher than what polymer clay needs to be cooked at, so this should be just fine. Honestly, this is my first time that I had used cardboard with polymer clay, so I was a bit wary. But when I did my research, I saw that a lot of people actually use various cardboard products when they're making polymer clay stuff, so I felt safe enough to try it. Spoiler alert, it worked really well. Anyway, when it's done baking, take it out of the oven and let it cool completely. Now remove the cardboard molds. Polymer clay shrinks a tiny bit when baking, so you'll probably find that the cardboard is pretty stuck on. Just be patient and try to carefully separate the clay from the cardboard. I found that everywhere there was tape, it came apart really easily, so if I did this again, I'd probably completely cover the mold with tape. Initially, I was trying to remove the cardboard molds without destroying them so I could possibly use them again, but it just wasn't happening. I ended up having to basically take them apart so I could fully pull the cardboard away from the clay. You'll see that the cardboard kind of stuck onto the clay some. If that bothers you, you can soak it in water for a bit and rub the cardboard off, but I wasn't too bothered with it because that part was going to be covered with soil anyway, and cardboard won't bother the plant. It's biodegradable, so I figured it would be fine. You'll probably find that you'll have some gaps where the clay pieces meet, so roll some more clay and squish it into these parts of the pot. I used a popsicle stick to help squish and smooth out these edges. You want to try to make this thing as watertight as you can, except for, obviously, the drainage hole. <laughs> With all these gaps filled in, bake again, 275 for 15 minutes. And there's your pot. This little dish fits into the bottom of the pot and will catch excess water that drips through after you water your plant. But since it fits up and under, it's nicely hidden and makes the plant pot look nice and sleek. Now, I wanted to go a bit further and make a plant stand for it, similar to the one that I saw when I was shopping. But that's totally not necessary if you like it just as it is. But to make the stand, measure across the widest part of your pot. Cut two pieces of wood to that size. The wood I'm using here is a small half inch by 1 4 inch square dowel. Cut four more pieces of wood to be the size that you want the stand to be. I cut mine down to about three inches. And on the two pieces that are as long as the pot is wide, Find the midpoint, and from that point, mark half of the width of the wood. For me, the wood is half an inch wide, so I marked out 1 4 inch from the middle on each side. Continue this mark halfway down the depth of the wood, like so. Use your saw and carefully cut into the wood in this spot every 
eighth inch or so, so that you have something like this. Then you can easily remove the wood in the middle with an X-Acto knife. Uh, do this carefully. Now these pieces should fit into each other like so. On the other four pieces you cut, mark one inch from one of the edges. Apply wood glue to the mark and then to one of the edges of a notched piece and glue it down. If you want, you can just clamp these pieces together with tape or you can use a small nail and tack them together like I'm doing. Repeat again for the other side. Repeat this whole process again for the other pieces of wood, but make sure the notched piece is flipped. You can go further and glue these pieces together in the notched part, but I wanted mine to be able to come apart so that I could take the stand apart and store it flat if I needed to. Set these aside to dry. Once dry, finish however you'd like. I'm a sucker for this dark stain, so that's what I did. And it's done. You can have the plant stand alone on its own, or you can stick it into the plant stand. And with this style of stand, you can flip it and either have it sitting high or sitting low. So all that's left is to plant something in the pot. I used some wire to secure a small piece of plastic canvas to the bottom of the hole to keep the dirt from falling through. And then I threw in some dirt and repotted one of my ferns right into the pot. I gave it a bit of water and ta-da! So here you can see the drainage tray in action. Any excess water will drip through and land in this tray. And here's the finished pot in the stand with the plant. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, all of that good stuff. You can follow me on all of my social media, which will be linked down below. Oh, and these just came in. I have a Teespring store. You might have noticed like right under the video, you'll see a little like banner that has a bunch of my merch. I made a Teespring store so that you guys could get like shirts and stuff. But I recently unlocked the ability to do embroidered hats. And so I have this now. Um, it's in my store. There's that banner down below and I'll link to it in the description box. But yeah, I just got it in. I made this design a couple weeks back, but I wanted to order one and make sure that the quality was good before I started showing you guys and telling you guys that they exist, but I think that they turned out so nice and I am really happy with how it looks. Um, this is the dad hat version and there are trucker hats and snapbacks and I'm going to eventually put beanies uh, with this embroidered design on it, but I haven't done that yet. So yeah. Also, to my patrons, I am going to include a discount code for you guys. So keep an eye out for a post on that. And also, I kind of like quietly did this. I didn't really want to like make a big deal about it, I guess. But I did enable memberships here on YouTube. Just kind of like trying it out. So there's that. So I'm going to make another post here on YouTube for you guys who become members for a discount code for my merch. So yeah, I hope you guys like my designs. I am planning on adding more, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Everything's just been super crazy this month because of like Mardi Gras preparations and stuff like that, so I've been pretty busy. But hopefully by next month I can sit down and actually like design a few more things. So if you don't like what I have up right now, just keep an eye out later. I will be posting more stuff and I will let you guys know. So yeah, if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping me produce this video. If you like my videos and have learned something from them, please consider supporting me on Patreon to help me continue to make them. It's totally optional, I'll still be making videos either way, it just helps me be able to put out better stuff. A link will be down below or you can just click up here in the corner.